Hello everyone welcome. Recently, with the fall of Lemonade and accusations that Lime 3DS is just a rebranding, the Pablo MK7 Citra Fork is emerging as the most recommended option at the moment. This is because the two directly responsible for the project are former Citra developers. In this video, we will analyze this fork, testing various games that have already been used in other tests to have a basis on whether it's worth waiting for major updates from Lime 3DS or waiting for this new fork. The video will not be a direct comparison, but I will mention other emulators in general. If you want to see direct comparisons, I will leave several links in the video description, both for Windows and Android. Firstly, regarding updates, Lime 3DS had its last update four days ago, while Pablo's Fork had its last update about two weeks ago. During my tests, I noticed that the fixes brought by Lemonade for the game Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon are also present here. Although in Lemonade's version 0.2 the game still has a higher FPS, in Pablo's Fork there is better stability, and the game doesn't flicker as much as in Lemonade. Other minor fixes, such as corrections in Kid Icarus Uprising, have already been implemented here, allowing the game to run perfectly. Speaking about the setup we will use in our tests, all games will be running with a 5x resolution multiplier, Vulkan API, and without any type of CPU alteration for the 3DS or any kind of frame skip. There will also be no video editing to make the images slower or faster. Let's then comment on the games I tested, if I encountered any issues, and show the project's performance in each game. The first game tested was Fire Emblem Awakening. As I had already shown in previous videos, it had issues during battle scenes. In Lime 3DS the game proved to be more stable, but we have a new champion. This new Citra renders battles with invisible objects only when compiling shaders. The other battles occur normally, without objects suddenly appearing on the screen. The next game tested was Kid Icarus Uprising. There were no issues running the game, both in the flight stages and when walking normally through the land stages. This game previously suffered from various problems and was not rendered correctly. Moving on to Luigi's Mansion, we tested both games. In the first game, originally released for GameCube, some of you had said that it was not running normally in the current Citra Forks. However, I am here to inform you that in Pablo's project, it is possible to play the game normally without any issues. In Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, the FPS issue has finally been fixed. Even without using any frame skip method or modifying the emulated 3DS CPU, the game remained at almost 60 FPS most of the time. I must confess that at no point did I feel any kind of slowdown or stuttering. There are also no issues when compiling more complex shaders. In summary, this is a great way to play this game now. Although I did not record this game in benchmark mode, as it would only be the background part of the video, I will report that Super Mario 3D Land, the entry point for this console, is completely playable, as it was in previous projects. Another essential game for the 3DS, Mario Kart 7, is working perfectly, without any problems, with smooth gameplay and no issues compiling new shaders. One of the best looking games on this console is Resident Evil Revelations. First, let's test it in benchmark mode to see the frame rate we achieve, and we manage to get almost 180 FPS, which would be three times the game's full speed. This is a very good result, but if we compare it with the results of other builds we've done in the past, it has the lowest performance, with the original Citra reaching an average of 276 FPS. However, in reality, these are just numbers. Do you think you'll be able to control Jill at a speed three times faster? Another important point is that the project doesn't crash when you activate your weapon for the first time, which was a bug that occurred in the past. The game is also presenting much fewer problems when compiling shaders upon entering new areas, it's as good as Lime 3DS. But a personal note, if you choose to play this game on Windows, don't use the 3DS version, as there is a native version for Windows. And if you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to leave your like so that YouTube recommends this content to even more people. And if this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up with the latest news about the 3DS and all our other projects. And the last game we're going to test is Super Smash Bros. first in benchmark mode with unlocked FPS. In this test, we achieved a very good result. Even with 4 enemies on the screen, we managed to maintain an average of 125 FPS easily. In our tests with previous projects, 
we achieved an average of 102 FPS using the latest version of Citra, while in the defunct Lemonade, we only got 97 FPS. Lime 3DS crashed the game when using increased resolution and unlocked FPS. Finally, in the method without unlocking the game's FPS, we managed to maintain 60 FPS most of the time. Before we conclude, I'd like to share my experience playing for an entire afternoon with this Pablo's fork on my ROG Phone 6. During about 4 hours of gameplay, I noticed that the battery drain was quite low. Using the AI charging mode, I managed to keep the battery consistently around 79%, without the charger working for long periods. My device didn't even heat up during all that gameplay time. There were virtually no issues on Android, shaders loaded quickly, even the most complex ones. I was able to play even Pokemon Omega Ruby Accelerated at 200%, as I like to play Pokemon at a fast pace, and neither the CPU nor the GPU of the device exceeded 50% usage. However, during this play session, a problem occurred. When encountering a random Pokemon, the game simply froze, causing me to lose all my progress since the last save. I'm not sure if this happened because I was playing with the emulator at 200% speed, or if it was some kind of bug. Just to provide context, the app was still responsive. I could even close the game and open another one, change settings. But the game simply didn't respond to any commands anymore, and I ended up losing about one hour and a half of gameplay. In conclusion, I currently consider this fork the best to be used both on PC and on Android. On Windows, major issues have been fixed, such as shaders that were compiled slowly using Vulkan, which caused problems in several games, like the Fire Emblem series. Furthermore, issues when running Luigi's Mansion have also been fixed, being a game that has not yet received a remaster for Switch and is still stuck on the 3DS to this day. Many of you asked in the last video where you could find the fork, and I'll leave the link for it in the description. So far, there is still no Discord community or official website, so I'll just leave the GitHub link for you to get the builds. Thank you for your viewership, and until the next video. Oh, my God.